let us start this lecture with thought process. If you aspire for better tomorrow, start working on it now using all the resources at your disposal. So, if you look at in the last lecture, we basically initiated discussion on the suit formation mechanism, how the suit be being formed. And today, we will be uh, looking at little uh, more details and keep in mind that whatever the mechanism I am uh, trying to discuss uh, with you is not ultimate one. Okay? This is just a one uh, way of looking at things that I must tell you, right? because this is uh, very, very complicated in nature and people have not understood the actual mechanism. It will take more time, but however, I will be give, talking about is uh, basically uh, some kind of uh, general mechanism. If you look at the fuel, fuel will be subjected to pyrolysis. Pyrolysis means, that means it will be you can say thermal heating uh, kind of thing process in which the higher hydrocarbon will be converted into lower hydrocarbons, right. And generally in the absence of oxidizer, that is the pyrolysis. But however, there might be some kind of a oxidizer which will be leaking into it, but in case of diffusion flame, general leakage will be nearby the flame surface, not far away from the flame surface. So, uh, there will be also some hydrogenation. So, hydrogenation is basically a process of uh, saturating the carbon, right by the hydrogen atom during cracking of higher hydrocarbons, right? because some hydrogen will be coming and attaching and then you know, uh, so that the carbon will be saturated kind of thing. That both will be going on parallelly and then you may get in something aliphatic hydrocarbons, right? you may get or may not get the kind of things. So, uh, therefore, there will be hydrogenation will be also taking place. I have given in a very linear way this process what I am de <laughs> describing, but that is not that way. Dehydrogenation means basically it will be uh, removing the hydrogen atom from these aliphatic compounds and making the way for the uh, going for the double bond or the acetylene kind of structures, right. And acetylene generally people consider is to be the uh, main uh, things for the initiation of the suit formation. And acetylene will be basically also polymerize. Polymerization is the basically the process of forming the larger hydrocarbon due to combining the smaller molecules, right? That is the basically polymerization. And due to this polymerization, you may get some polyacetylene kind of features. Uh, the process you can say this way, right? And then uh, it will be also when you are doing this polyacetylene and some other things will be, then it may cyclarization and it will be uh, basically cycling the process of forming one more or more rings in a chemical compound, because the ring structure is very important. Like your benzene, you know, there is a ring structure, right. And that gives to the aromatic ring formations, right, because of the cyclarization. And uh, then you will get the patch formations, right. And the patch is a very important uh, precursor for that. And uh, this patch is basically what? Polyaromatic hydrocarbons, right. And this patch will be uh, now uh, converted into the particle nuclei. And this is the initiation of the soot particle. If you look at all our gaseous phase is taking place and then from that you are getting a solid that is the soot. Uh, nuclei of the particle, nuclei means initiation. And then if this nuclei, the soot, uh, there will be some growth of the, uh, the soot particle which will be taking place. If there is a soot here, right, let us say there is a soot here, then the some vapor will be coming and then coming over here getting cooled, right, and then the surface will be growth, there will be surface growth, right, will be there. And then uh, beside this, when these uh, suits are born there, they can come in contact, coagulate, right, join each other. There might be necking formation because of high temperature, right, they join together. There might be sintering also, 
right? There is several things which will be taking place. All are there will be surface reaction which will be taking place, and beside this there will be some also surface growth. All are taking place parallel, right? And then when this is taking place, there can be various processes which are taking place and different sizes will be there. And this suit will be passing through some very high temperature zone, high temperature zone, zone and then it will be get oxidized. That means, you know the size will be reduced again, right and it will be passing through that. So, this is the whole process one can say. As I told earlier that this process is basically I have shown in a very linear fashion, but it is not the case. Why? The nature is not linear, it is all non-linear in nature. So, what it will be trying to do, how the particles are formed, other things is a matter of research and debate discussion. So, it is just some model, but I will be showing you little more uh, specifically and uh, let me tell you that how uh, it can be. This is again another model. If you look at this is the as I told this is a pyrolysis or you can say oxidative pyrolysis of well, right. And uh, basically oxidative pyrolysis means there might be some kind of oxygen which will might be there. And then there will be uh, vinyl you know radicals which is will be there it will be in the same and it can be converted into 1, 3 beta dynyl radicals right. And then it can be uh, vinyl acetylene kind of structures right. If you look at this uh, vinyl acetylene structure it will be looking like that. So, this uh, kind of thing vinyl acetylene uh, uh, radicals will be looking like that and then uh, there will be also aline being formed. Uh, Aline uh, structure will be looking like that. Let me show you that this is basically C C double bond and then the this H and H and this will be and this is uh, can be converted into uh, basically uh, methyl acetylene, right? It can be converted into that uh, this can be converted into methyl acetylene which is uh, basically C H 3 C triple bond kind of things right. And this uh, uh, are you getting then it will be uh, cyclized after this you know once it is formed to this form this is basically uh, methyl acetylene then it will be si uh, linear it will be 6 uh, 5 uh, kind of thing uh, H 6 it will be this thing and after that this will be you uh, see uh, once this is this can get into this vinyl uh, uh, acetylene C 6 H 5 or it can go to cyclic uh, C 6 H 5 kind of uh, phenyl group it can come into and aline can get into this here or methyl acetylene can also convert into C 6 H any other route it can take. And then once it is come, then it will be basically uh, phenyl uh, things which will be formed here, right? C six H five phenyl group, and then that will be again joined together. Polymerization will be taking place, and this is basically patch. This is patch is being formed. The patch is being joined together. You know, this is a well phenyl group, they will be joining together and putting this patch. Patch is basically poly uh, aromatic hydrocarbons. And once it is formed, then what you call you will get the soot particles, right. And soot particle that is the inception of soot particles, right. And till now, whatever is happening is in the molecular level, right. This is known as molecular zone, right you can say there will be some zone where it will be taking place. And then after that this is you can say the particle zone. Once it is being formed there will be also surface growth. If you look at this particle as it is moving there is a surface growth and it is increasing and then it may come in contact you know like a surface growth will be continuing and then there may come in contact there may be center then there might be surface growth it may increase its size right. Coagulation will be taking place. And all those things you will get, you know, particle size suit will be 
1 nanometer to 40 plus nanometer order you will be getting right. And these particles uh, sometimes the smaller particles is uh, basically known as the incipient suit and some green suit that would not be radiating much, but whereas the, this larger one it will be uh, radiating because it is a black in color and then it will be radiating the more amount of it. Keep in mind that the, uh, the larger particles will be uh, of course, we can see, but the smaller particles is uh, very, very dangerous than the larger particles, particularly in the CNG and other things you know the particle size will be very, very small and that will be more reactive than the larger particles right. So, therefore, we are getting the asthma and other problems is in uh, being enhanced more because of use of CNG gas you know we are saying oh we have overcome the problem of the diesel suit, but however, we have now put some suit which you cannot really detect, <laughs> detect it. So, this is a more uh, dangerous than the, this thing that you should keep in mind. Let us now uh, get back to the jet diffusion flame, what is really happening? If you look at this zone is basically the molecular zone, right, where all these things will be taking place polymerization and then you know all the processes I have already discussed like uh, um, hydrogenation, cyclarization, polymerization all those things are taking place and the patch is being formed right. And these are the inception point, this is the pre mixed flame if you look at the, the, the nothing will be happening here, but here it will be taking place and then the particles generally the this region, this region is basically the molecular zone right. But however, as it goes on this will be particle size will be increasing and these are the particle zones. And uh, of course, in this temperature because it is not that way I have shown it can be uh, depending on the streamline like if I say this is the streamline is going like this way the particle will be moving in this you know it will be passing through the flame. And some streamline will be moving this way right. So, uh, therefore, that will be taking away the particle through the flame and then it will get okay, some can go straight right, some can go streamline can go straight also right. So, that is a, this is basically a high temperature zone. So, this is known as oxidation if you look at particle size again decreases because of oxidation right. So, more it will remain in the uh, go through the flame and then temperature higher zone. So, then particle size you can reduce right. So, uh, this particle size if look at uh, we will have to uh, see that what are the parameters that govern the particle size and its distribution and um, I will just discuss some of them already we have discussed that is the type of well right. We have seen that uh, aliphatic is having uh, the more prone to the uh, alkanes kind of things and higher hydrocarbons are more prone to the soot than the lower hydrocarbons right and uh, the diluents right and uh, diluents it can be inert it can be reactive diluents right. Uh, that also affects and people have found out that uh, this uh, carbon dioxide uh, decreases the soot formation when you dilute, dilute. But however, if we increase the helium in the as a diluent helium gas in the air or in the fuel then it is increasing. So, of course, those things are to be looked at why it is so, but if you um, the soot uh, particle size and then distribution or the this thing will depend on depend on the turbulence level and uh, particularly one has to look at uh, that uh, whether the turbulence time is higher or the chemical time is higher you know that kind of uh, this thing versus have to look at it. And um, it has been found out that when the inlet temperature is increased particularly for the fuel or the then you find that uh, this uh, the soot uh, uh, generation being decreases, uh, soot generation uh, decreases with increase in inlet uh, temperature of the fuel and also oxidizer. And when we increase the pressure the soot level or the soot formations increases. So, that is the thing people have found out and that is uh, not very uh, general, but at least for the diffusion flame 
people have jet diffusion frame people have found it out. So, one can think of. So, uh, what uh, till now we have basically looked at the jet diffusion frame and we will be uh, discussing about now the going moving into the liquid uh, fuel combustion because till now we have looked at uh, basically the gaseous fuel combustion right and uh, today we will be initiating discussion on the liquid fuel combustion. <coughs> so, if you look at uh, the applications of liquid fuel combustion it is quite a bit and if you consider that uh, basically the aerospace application this is the gas turbine engine and this is of course, a rocket engines I have shown here is a liquid oxygen and then gaseous hydrogen and of course, this is your diesel engine this is a spray which is coming diesel engine right uh, C i engine compression ignition engine right and uh, this is a furnace where you are using high pressure uh, you know fuel oils to uh, use and this is the oil spray right is being generated and, and there are several application where you will be using the liquid fuel. Uh, and the question arises why you will go for the liquid fuel and uh, how to burn the liquid fuel effectively is one question. As I told earlier the liquid fuel we need to go for it for transportation and the energy density uh, of the liquid fuel is much higher as compared to the gaseous fuel right and storage is easy, easier for the liquid fuel and also safety other issues are there. And but how to burn the liquid fuel is the one question because if I take a pan and do that it will be uh, not serve our purpose. Why? Because that uh, the limitation of the pan size will tell us how much it is being burnt and how we will control it right that is another question. So, for that what we need to do we will have to basically use the spray that means you will have to convert the liquid bulk liquid into array of droplets and that process we call atomization. So, basically uh, atomization is a process of breaking of bulk liquid into arrays of droplet of different sizes right. Of course, there is a some atomizer which can give mono disperse, but generally in practical situation it cannot be used right, but generally poly disperse uh, droplets are being formed. And uh, uh, a question might be arises in your mind why you will go for that right because of fact that this uh, uh, we will go for a smaller droplets also or should we go for a larger droplets smaller, but there will be a problem. If you go for two small droplets then what will happen? It will be a leading to a pre mixing of the combustion and pre mixing means it will be basically. Uh, subjected to the combustion instabilities okay. of course, that depends on situation, but generally. So, uh, whereas the diffusion flame will be less prone to the combustion uh, instability and other things. So, uh, generally on an average there is certain range of droplets which will be uh, used for the design of this thing. So, uh, then what is the requirement for the atomization is basically we need to increase the surface area of the fuel droplets. For example, if I take uh, something around uh, let us say uh, 1 centimeter droplets and I will convert into 1 mm right droplets let us say just for the, then what will happen that surface area will be increasing very largely because it goes by the, the um, uh, you know like. Uh, surface area is goes by the square whereas, the um, mass of the fuel consumed goes by the cube is not it. So, therefore, the surface area will be enhanced very much uh, and when you go for and enhancing the vaporization rate because in liquid combustion basically what has to be done the liquid has to evaporate it 
and then it will be uh, evaporated into the gaseous fuel and then it will be come in contact with the oxidizer mixed well and then combustion will be taking place. And as a result the vaporization rate will be higher, so it will be enhancing the combustion rate. So, that is the reason why we need to go for atomization. Let us see that how we can do that. For example, I can pass uh, with through an orifice certain liquid and this is a liquid let us say it is passing through, this is an orifice the you know it is coming over and it is coming as a very nice uh, tube kind of things or a you know solid um, kind of um, jet is coming, but is it atomized? Now, why it is not atomized? But however, if I will increase the I will use the same orifice, but I will increase the pressure right. That means, if I will increase pressure for the same orifice and same downstream pressure, then what will happen? Flow rate will be higher, flow rate will be higher means the velocity will be higher right. Then what will happen? It will be the converted into a very a kind of a spray right. Now, why it is happening? Because here the liquid is basically uh, thinned down and it is the ligaments are being formed and then it will be separated out and then it will be converted into the secondary atomization, primary atomization all those things will be taking place and you will get a very nice distribution of the droplet size. But why it is happening? Because of fact that when it is coming this liquid in the solid jet of the liquid there is a pressure force which is coming or you can say the momentum force that is making the fluid to move right. And there will be also some resistance which is coming right. If that is which is, what is the resistance that is the surface tension force which will be making the fluid to adhere togetherness it will be fluid will be together right. If you are giving more force for to disintegrate because then only it will possible that means there will be what you call resisting forces and there will be disruptive forces. Disruptive forces in this case is less in case solid there as compared to the resisting force, resisting is the surface tension right. So, therefore, you cannot really make this liquid jet to disintegrate. Atomization is basically disintegration of the liquid into the droplets. So, therefore, basically, uh, but when it is increasing the pressure, what is happening? The momentum will be higher and the surface tension force will be overcome by the increase in momentum. As a result, you know it will be disintegrated and that is true for uh, us also right. Always we are subjected to which force? One is the disruptive forces, other is restoring forces or the resisting forces. So, that depends upon whether we will make or break you know. <laughs> now, here our interest is to break the liquid bond or the uh, liquid uh, coalescence kind of things is not really chemical bond, it is a you can say physically kind of thing. So, therefore, I will have to apply the more forces than what it could resist. Let us say if I want to uh, take a, a you know instead of water or the fuel, I will take some thick fluid. It is very difficult to uh, atomize it, is not it, because of that. And uh, now the liquid fuel will be uh, combustion will be dependent on the droplet size and its distribution. It will be dependent on the type of fuel what you are using, whether it will be viscous fluid, whether it is a what kind of fluid it is having right that also. And uh, whether the ambient gas and temperature of the you know combustors it will be it will be dependent on the velocity between the droplet and the gas because it will be moving. And uh, keep in mind that this uh, liquid combustion will be dependent on also the extent of mixing and the turbulence level and also the various complex zones what will be there for flame stabilization. So, it is quite complex in nature. So, with this uh, I will uh, stop over, we will be looking at uh, detail about uh, this thing uh, in the next lecture right uh, ok. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.